1911, Paris, France. It's Monday morning and it's business as usual at the Louvre Museum. At 9 a.m., the doors open to the public. Curious tourists flood inside to see the most famous collection of art in the world. But on this particular Monday, something was missing. It's gone! What? Just like that, the Mona Lisa was gone. Let me get this straight. You're telling me someone stole the most famous painting in the world? I call BS. How is that possible? More importantly, who the f could have pulled that off? At the time, the Mona Lisa wasn't the most famous painting, only well known inside the art world, but that would soon change, all thanks to 1881. Far away from France, Vincenzo Perugia was born in Lake Como, a small part of Dumenza, Italy. As soon as he could hold a brush, Vincenzo knew he was meant to paint, but there was one little problem. His family was poor. <laughs> Making money as a painter was hard enough. For a kid from a small town in Italy, it was impossible. It only makes sense that his mom didn't support him. But Vincenzo refused to give up. He was determined to make it as a famous painter, not only to prove his mom wrong, but also to give her a better life. Hi, I'm here for the painting job. Follow me. Can I just say, sir, it's been my dream to be a painter since I was a little boy, so I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. Right. Well, here it is. Oh, I think there's a misunderstanding. How so? I meant, like, I want to be an artist. Yeah, I know. You do? Wanna know how I know? How? Because you, your neighbor, your neighbor's kid, your mom, dad, even your grandma, all wanna be artists. Everyone wants to express themselves. But the world doesn't need your art. We need your labor. Now get to it. Oof, that's awkward. My guy thought he booked his dream job. I guess if it was that easy, everyone would do it. Vincenzo's persisting. It may not have been his dream job, but it was still a start. So he painted houses all over Paris. It wasn't glamorous, but enough to keep him fed. This went on for a few years, until one day, he fell in love. Be careful with that. What is this place? The Louvre? It's only the most famous collection of art in the world. But I guess someone like you wouldn't know. The Louvre. Wait. Let me work for you. There's no work for your kind here. Please, I'll do anything. Anything? Vincenzo is both closer to and farther away from his dream than ever. He found his way into the mecca of art, but what he's hired for couldn't be farther away from painting. Instead, he's a carpenter that works in cutting glass and wood to build frames for other people's art. Still, he's in heaven. Every day, he gets to walk through these 
glorious halls, learning from the best of the best. But while he was working there, he wasn't just learning about art. He was also learning about the building's security. Vincenzo's just getting off work when, psst, Marquez is standing near an alleyway entrance. He waves for Vincenzo to come to him. Marquez? Sorry, kid. What? Marquez? I knew we couldn't trust that slime. What does he want with our guy now? Welcome back. Mm, mm, mm. Relax, I'm not gonna hurt you. I have a business proposition. I want you to steal a painting for me. Should be easy with your new job. I'm a painter, not a thief. Still chasing the dream, eh, kid? I respect it, but we gotta be realistic. They will never let someone like you make it here. I'll just get so good, they can't ignore me. I didn't want it to come to this. See, I have ears everywhere. And word on the street is that your mom isn't feeling so good these days. She needs to see a doctor, and that ain't cheap. So I'm gonna ask one more time. You steal a painting, I sell it. We split it 50-50. What do you say? Keep chasing the dream, or secure the bag and save his mom. That's tough. I probably would have done the same. Because of his job, Vincenzo knew the layout of the Louvre better than anybody. So on Sunday, he hid in the storage room, waiting until the museum closed and everybody left. Then, Vincenzo walks through the hallways quietly, constantly checking to make sure he's alone. He should be, at least until the morning. There, the Mona Lisa. For a moment, he just takes in her beauty. The strokes are so bold, but masterful. This truly is someone's legacy. Ah, he can't do it. He wants to be an artist, not a thief. But then, you. It's Hugo. What are you doing here? I have to build a new frame for the Mona Lisa. Carry on then. Remember to lock up when you're finished. That was close. Okay, back to business. Now that Hugo saw him at the scene of the crime, he has to go through with it, and there's no turning back. As soon as Vincenzo gets outside, he takes off the cover. Then he uses his knife to cut the Mona Lisa from its frame. He carefully removes it, then rolls it up, and leaves. My guy just went full Assassin's Creed! Wait, if Hugo saw him, as soon as he finds out the Mona Lisa's missing, wouldn't Vincenzo be, like, the first suspect? Vincenzo's not wasting any time. Hugo's gonna come after him any moment, and he's gotta get out of here. But then... Someone's here. Vincenzo walks over and opens the front door. It's Hugo, and he's not alone. They searched Vincenzo's tiny apartment thoroughly, but to Hugo's disappointment, they found nothing. But how is that possible? Where could Vincenzo have hidden it? Turns out that while working at the Louvre, Vincenzo became a pretty good carpenter. So good 
that he was able to design a table that had the exact same dimensions as the Mona Lisa. Yes! I mean, no! I mean, I guess he's a criminal, but is it bad that I'm rooting for him? Because now he can save his mom, right? Did you find a buyer yet? Just like I told you yesterday and the day before that. No! What's the holdup? The holdup? The entire country is looking for that thing. It's too hot right now. Basically, after the Mona Lisa was stolen, it went from precious art piece to national sensation. Everybody wanted to know who the mystery thief was. Conspiracies popped up everywhere, accusing art critics to the Germans to Pablo Picasso. I mean, the guy did say, good artist copy, great artist steal. Bruh. Marquez snaked him again? How did Vincenzo not see this coming? When's he gonna learn that man can't be trusted? Fool him once, shame on you. Fool him twice, shame on him. Vincenzo was done waiting for Marquez, so he organized his own sale with an Italian antique dealer, Alfredo Jerry. Come in. So, where is it? Vincenzo walks over to a table in the middle of the room. He removes the top and reveals the Mona Lisa in all her glory. Alfredo couldn't believe it that all this time, the Mona Lisa was here in this dingy old basement under all this dirty laundry. He reaches for it, but Vincenzo stops him. 500,000 lira. Relax, you'll get your money. After, I take it back to the gallery and verify that it's real. At this point, he doesn't really have a choice, so Vincenzo agrees. A week goes by, and Vincenzo's mom is getting weaker every day. She needs help now, or it'll be too late. Hello? It's Alfredo. The painting has been verified. Come and collect your payment. His prayers have been answered at last. Just a little longer, and he can finally save his mom. After she gets better, he can give her the life she could never afford. Just a little longer, and Vincenzo was about to be rich beyond his wildest dreams. <gasps> no! He was so close. I guess you win some, you lose most. Especially when it involves a shady art dealer who's named after a pasta. Or is it the other way around? Anyways, what happened after that? Even though Vincenzo had good intentions, he still had to pay for his crimes. But it wasn't all bad. Since the Mona Lisa was originally painted by Leonardo da Vinci in Italy, somehow, a rumor was spread and people thought the reason why Vincenzo stole the Mona Lisa was to return it to its homeland. He became a national hero. He was constantly sent flowers, love letters, cakes, wine, and more while he was in prison. Not only that, but his sentence was also reduced and he was released after just seven months. Meanwhile, the Mona Lisa toured Italy for two months and was viewed by tens of thousands before being returned to the Louvre. After everything settled, Vincenzo returned to France and opened a small paint shop where he would live out the rest of his days. Even though he never became a famous painter, he's the reason we know about the Mona Lisa, the most famous painting of all time. I guess life doesn't always happen the way we expect, but always exactly as it's meant to.